Okay, the next thing we want to look at is filtering images. And this is not Instagram filters. This is uh, actually using the image filter uh, object. Okay. And so the way this looks is we are calling the image.filter. So it's image on the image object. That is a filter method. And what we're giving it as an argument is image filter dot blur. Okay, and that that will blur the image. So let's take a look at that. Image filter dot blur looks a little blurry, not super blurry. So if we want more control over that, we can use something called the box blur. And that takes that takes an argument, a number that represents how much we want to blur it. Now, I can't tell you five equals this and 20 equals this. It's kind of something you want to mess around with to get a feel for. But if you use, here's five. Okay, that's a little blurry. And if we go 20, then it looks like this. Okay, now you can see the math at work here in the higher blurred image, and you can see why it's called box blur, because what you can see is that it's starting to make little box shapes in it. It's an algorithm that uses a vertical and horizontal blurring. That's pretty good, but it's not a very realistic blur. This is not really what it looks like. You know, if, you're, if you wear glasses and you take your glasses off, it doesn't really blur in this way. Or if you have a camera that's out of focus, this is not what it looks like. The camera doesn't add vertical and horizontal artifacts when it blurs. So box blur is kind of a basic blur. It's okay, but we have a better blurring algorithm and it's called a Gaussian blur. And Gauss is the is the is the originator of this idea or this type of blur. So a Gaussian blur is sort of the standard when it comes to making a blur that looks realistic. And so if I and again that takes an argument that that specifies how much we want to blur. But if I do a Gaussian at 20, what you'll see is that looks smooth compared to the other. Here I'll bring up the other one so you can compare them. Okay, so you can see the difference. This is the box blur, and over here to the left is the Gaussian blur. The Gaussian looks smooth, like you're looking through frosted glass or something, or you've got your camera out of focus. So if you want something that looks smooth, I recommend the Gaussian blur. Sometimes the box blur gives you an effect that you actually want. It just depends on what you're looking for. Okay, so. That is our blur filters. A few others that you might use, and these are uh, sharpen is the opposite of blur. So it'll take a, an image and it'll make the edges more sharp. Smooth is kind of like a blur, but it basically will take an image that has, that looks more pixelated and try to smooth it out. The end result is a little bit blurry though. If I have an image that I want to convert from color to black and white, I can use image.convert and I give it this L. L is the argument that says convert it to gray scale. So if I say, um, image two equals image dot Convert, not Y, there we go, L, then it takes all the color out of it and convert it to a black and white. So you can do a lot of cool stuff very simply with this. Okay, and we have uh, find edges is an interesting one. Let's, let's try that. 
image and image two equals image. I think I can just go like this. There we go. Image filter dot find edges is the argument. Image dot filter, just like this. Remember, image filter is the library name or the object name, so we're we're using that capitalized. Case doesn't matter here. So that finds the edges. It finds anything in the image where there's a a big change from one color to another. So that produces an interesting effect. And then if I use emboss, this one's kind of interesting too. MB emboss. What that does is it's very similar to find edges, except what it produces is it looks like this was stamped into paper now. It looks like you've actually embossed that. So it gives it kind of a 3D effect, which is kind of interesting. So you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with images and using those filters. Um, I'll show you one other thing here. Let's, we can amp up the color a little bit, okay? So that if I, I can enhance using image.enhance, I can amp up the color or I can reduce the color. Or I can shift the color to a different part of the color wheel. So that actually shifts the color of the image. <coughs> and you can get some pretty crazy effects with that too. So you can, you can play with the colors, you can play with all kinds of things. And if you combine these effects, you can get some really cool effects going too. So for today, uh, what I would like you to do with our little bit of time that you have left, if, you, if you're not working on other things, Here's some things to try. Uh, using the OS uh, module, learn how to list images in a directory. That will be useful for the assignment. Learn, figure out how to use a menu to load an image. So you list that, you iterate through uh, images in a directory. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Uh, actually, I'm gonna show you that next week, but I want you to, I want you to play around with that. Um, Try it using functions for different operations, for different uh, applying different filters or different sizes to image, using the image as a parameter. So you're using that black box technique to, to put the image in as a parameter or as an argument, and then you're returning something. <coughs> Try saving an edited image file uh, using a, an image name that the user inputs. And think about how you put together an image editing program. Okay, so that's... That's sort of the play around stuff that'll prep you for some of the work we're going to do on, uh, on on the next part of the class. But we're we've got no sandbox for this assign for this module, no sandbox for any of the last four modules, just the assignment. So next time we'll come back and actually work on the assignment. So you've got like 20 minutes left if you want to uh, work on work on other stuff or if you want to play around with some of these concepts. Uh, and try stuff on your own. Remember, if you want to open a file, it's got to be on your computer. So if you if you go to like Google image search, you can right click on a, on a file and on an image file, save it to your computer and play around with it that way. Smaller images are generally going to be quicker when you're doing operations to them. Bigger images can sometimes take a bit.